Lineage OS 22 is already bringing Android 15 to a host of ordinarily unsupported hardware, but does flashing this custom ROM in 2025 make sense? Well, here's everything you need to know in our review of Lineage OS 22. Well, it's technically 22.1, so let's get into it. Quick question though, why haven't you subscribed to the channel yet? Go on, really helps me out. You get something nice out of it. You get videos like this and we all have a good time. Cheers. So why should you choose Lineage OS 22 in this year of our Lord 2025? Well, the idea that your phone will last for years into the future isn't exactly a lofty goal. I don't think it's anything that companies shouldn't already be doing, but thanks to changes in how update schedules have been handled, there is hope that you will be able to use your phone for the next flagship or whatever it is for the better part of the upcoming decade. That's really great if you're ready to upgrade your phone and if you have the money to do so, but what about if you use a phone you like and don't wanna spend the money to ensure that your phone is up to date, secure and safe to use? Well, there's a dwindling pool of third party ROMs that offer us options to keep something running way beyond the date the manufacturer has set for basically obsolescence. Lineage OS 22 is one of the handful of reputable large-scale ROM projects aimed at giving your phone a few more years of life while simultaneously providing a cleaner pixel-like aesthetic without sacrificing too much in terms of customizations and added control that we all know and love from custom ROMs back in the day. I think if you have an older phone lying around and maybe want to keep using it as a backup or maybe a spare device or even set one up for an old elderly relative or young family member then Lineage OS is a really great way to ensure that you get new security patches for added safety from potential Android exploits. That's more than just an added bonus of actually installing this or flashing this, but on top of that, you get a lightweight skin that lots of older phones may have shipped without, and it means potentially you'll get performance gains on top of it. Before we get into the nitty gritty though, it's important to note that last year with Lineage OS 21, which was based on Android 14, there isn't as many changes here as you might have expected. Lineage OS 22, or 22.1, which is technically been released as, is basically the precursor to version 23.2, which is expected to be launched later this year when Android 16 arrives. So that means many of the changes here are merely to enhance the experience with Android 15, which is just a slight step forward over Android 14 anyway. This includes things like cosmetic changes, tweaks to under the hood performance, plus things that are slightly less tangible if you've come from this old version. The most notable new change here is that the old 11 music player has been officially discontinued and in its place is a new app called, well, 12. It's an almost from the ground up reworking of the default Lineage OS 22 music player, complete with Material U theming support. When you launch this for the first time, you might also notice that it does somewhat mimic VLC's functionality with more file formats being supported or at least included in your on-device media. I think that could be a little bit problematic, but at least having the option to see this content within the new activity feed means you do have a quick access panel for stuff you might want to view, read, watch, or even listen to, which is naturally what you'd want from a music player. A brand new player UI brings this app right up to date. It's clean, it's simple, and now ditches the reliance on hidden menus for specific controls. So when you're viewing this, you'll get a mini floating panel that has options for things like playback speed, playlist controls, equalizer settings, plus cue management, in the upper right, you can also quickly see just what type of file is playing. I've only tested with MP3s, but it does support FLAC and some other file formats as well. And to add to this, this overhaul has been actually quite extensive. When you use the mini player in the file app too, when you'll see and get more controls with this up overhaul. Previously, this was just limited to a play pause button, which means you probably wouldn't use this apart from just maybe testing out tracks. Now you can do things like use the playback seek bar, shuffle your songs, loop, skip and return if you do want to actually use this in the files app to just listen to your files that is. If you want to link your library to your music server if you have one, then you have Subsonic, Open Subsonic and Jellyfin protocol support as well, which is a really good touch. One minor negative to this switch means that some of the old home screen widgets have been removed. You now just have one resizable option, although it does have more interactive elements and I think in all honesty, it looks way better as part of your device theme. So yeah, you do lose a couple of widgets, but you do get one that's a lot more actually feature rich as a result. So prior to the Lineage OS 2022 update, you needed an external app to read PDF files, as weird as that seems. Just trying to open them from the files application would throw up a warning that your device couldn't open the file or the file format may have problems. Now though, with this update, there is a PDF reader built right into the system. So as basic as it sounds, you'll at least be able to view any documents that you download or send. The PDF reader itself is incredibly basic, 
but I do think that's all it needs to be. One of the other best things about the Lineage OS 2022 release is that it has been updated to include lots of the changes which were added with Android 15 QPR 1 from December 2024. And this means you're getting some extra tuning on top of the vanilla Android 15 release from back in October 2024. It's all quality of life additions that really do help polish up Android. It's not all great news though, as during the initial setup process, we actually noticed the two button navigation option has been removed when comparing to the older Android 14 build of Lineage OS. You'll have to use three button navigation or gestures moving forward, but there was no word from Lineage OS in their initial change log as to why this would be the case. It seems that the pre Android 10 screen control options are basically dead moving forward. You might also notice that there are some updated animations when doing things like long pressing quick settings tiles to access the associated deeper settings menus. Lineage OS 22 also has the brand new settings section layout once you get in there with changes for certain controls, sections and even new switches and icons for these specific section headers. It takes a little while to get used to but I do think it's better for overall access. The predictive back animation is also available here across the entire system with supported applications and it's most prominent in the settings app as you can see here on screen. Accessibility options, they're plentiful in Android but QPR1 added a new section for the display within wallpaper and style that lets you set or adjust the colour contrast settings to better suit your theme. You'll also get a brand new wallpaper picker that lets you see both lock screen and home screen simultaneously before you apply them with a brand new pop-up, which I do think makes things a lot clearer. You might also notice when you go into the storage section that Lineage now better separates just how much space is taken by the system and any temporary files associated with the specific build you have installed. If you do have developer options enabled, which I think you really should, especially if you counter some issues, there are some neat extra options here like the ability to disable default frame rates for games, meaning if you do have a high refresh rate screen, the game should run at those high refresh rates more often. There's the grammatical gender options for how Android refers to you, the user, but there are some other options in here as well, which make this another extra set of features which I do think you might want to use. Most of you probably won't anyway. Other notables include the improved screen recording chip, which lets you tap or access controls to stop recording from the status bar. There's also a quick keyboard switcher for accessing multiple layouts or languages if you do have multiple keyboards accessed and enabled on your phone. As part of the Wi-Fi security options, there's a toggle here as well that lets you enable or disable the use of web connections if you want that added Wi-Fi network security. One of the only disappointing omissions with this update that was available or is available on Pixel phones with the Android 15 QPR 1 release is that of the 80% charge limit controls. It might come at some point in the future and we're hopeful we will get that, but there is a new battery manager section here in Lineage OS 22 that effectively mimics the existing adaptive battery settings which are found on Pixel phones and have been around for a while. It is just a toggle and the rest is managed by Lineage OS, but hopefully you do have this enabled, should mean you should get better battery life as the system learns your usage habits. And although not officially listed in the Lineage OS 2022 change log, there are a number of really minor cosmetic changes somewhat unrelated to that core Android 15 QPR1 update, which this build is based on. These include things like larger spacing between apps and icons in the app drawer, plus an updated font in this section too. It just looked a little bit cleaner, but then you might not notice this anyway. The only other change you might spot is if you use the default Lineage OS messaging application, there is an extended fab which is used for starting new conversations, but no other major changes here across the default applications found on this device, save the ones I mentioned slightly earlier. So the ideal test bed for Lineage OS 22 is probably an older phone that is starting to show its age because you're gonna give it potentially a new lease of life. Despite a massive pool of unsupported handsets, we can't actually fully test all of these manually as there are so many, as it also will be time consuming and it might not mimic your own experience anyway, especially if you do set them up slightly differently. So I've used a Pixel 7a and I've compared this to a Lineage OS 21, a build from last year. I think it's still a fine phone. It's had zero issues after flashing this update. However, older phones could see greater performance upticks after updating here to this latest build as the certain under the hood system enhancements will help reduce the workload on aging internals. Even so, I do think while the performance is very good and I've enjoyed the experience testing this over the last few days, I think you should err on the side of caution. Older hardware does have its limitations and flashing the latest version of Android, it, it is exciting and enticing, but it can be fraught with issues because optimization 
isn't always possible, especially on devices, the older they get. Getting the latest security patches though is definitely a reason I do think you should think about getting a custom ROM if you are insistent on using an older phone. We also shouldn't forget that the hardware specific functionality you have with certain phones might get lost or workarounds will be needed to access certain features. For instance, Google Pay is still unavailable due to the system's inability to pass play integrity or safety net checks. So you'll need something like Magisk or Zigisk. This can be used to set this up, but the Lineage team does not endorse them. So if you do want to enable that, you'll have to go about and find out how to do that yourself. I do think the upgrade process for Lineage OS 22 is super simple. If you have a supported handset that already has an official build of the ROM installed, you probably will have had a notification by now. I think one of the best aspects of this method is, is it doesn't require a device wipe. So in theory, everything in your phone should be safe if you do have an old device and Lineage OS is installed upon it. I think on top of that, you probably should, should back up your information or your important information, accounts and files to be extra safe before you do try and do this. You're probably asking me all of that information thrown out there, should you install Lineage OS 22 on your device? Well, I ran this Android 15 build on a Pixel 7a for a few days, as I mentioned, to test drive the experience. There are lots of reasons I can see why someone would want to run this on their phone. The most obvious would be to get away from specific Google services by avoiding adding G apps or the applications that Google, part of Google's GMS suite during that initial install or flashing process. If I were using an older phone that had surpassed or was close to the end of its official support window, I would I'd probably slap this on my phone anyway, especially a non-Google phone. Recently launched Android phones are coming with wider and longer support windows, so I do think it feels less necessary than ever to flash a custom ROM unless you cannot stand specific skins or want specific functions that Lineage OS has tacked on. The reality here is that nobody needs to use Lineage OS. In fact, most people should probably avoid it altogether if they're not confident or technically inclined to flash a ROM, even though it's fairly simple. There is something about this Android build that holds a place in my heart though. It's clean, it's lightweight, it's fairly free from bugs, and I do think it offers that way to expend the lifespan on often long forgotten phones and tablets that we as consumers should really be fighting to keep running and forcing companies to offer longer support windows, especially as planned obsolescence still feels like it's very much a thing in this industry. I think bleeding out a few more years of even a backup phone is something I highly encourage. I will continue to keep at least one or two of my phones running a version of Lineage so long as they keep getting released or they keep releasing updates for it. And I think realistically, you should give this a serious consideration for your phone. I wanna ask you if you have tried this on your device, are you enjoying it? Do you like Lineage? Is there a reason why you choose it over other ROMs? I'll also leave links on how to get started down below in the description. There are also thorough guides on the Lineage OS wiki, which you can follow. I'm not gonna give you true uh, information there, because they will give you a better and more accurate guide. I do think it's well worth the effort if you do not want to spend the money on a new phone and you still want those updates. So that's Lineage OS 22. I think it's a great update. It's not a major update, but yeah, let me know what you think. And thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon.